Okay, this is a Unit 5 video on gas stoichiometry. Here we're going to look at the conditions of STP, um, more specifically standard pressure and temperature. We're going to apply the gas laws to, to stoichiometric calculations, and then we're going to calculate the molar mass of a gas using laboratory data and the ideal gas law. Guys, I have to tell you, this is just like what you do in lab. So I really do try to tie it into what you will see on your pre-lab, what you're going to be using in your experiment, and so on. So we're really going to be dealing with uh, gas stoichiometry here. Um, now, we saw in the gas law video all of the different gas laws and how they combined into um, the ideal gas law. And then we use the ideal gas law, the combined gas law, for calculations. Um, now we're going to take it a step further. Hmm. And we're going to talk about STP. The reason we would have a standard set of conditions is so that people in America, people in Japan, people in Australia, we can all discuss the relative... Um, conditions that produce something. And so for us, standard temperature and pressure is um, 0 degrees Celsius, or 273 Kelvin, and 1 atmosphere. It turns out that this is basically the temperature and pressure at sea level on basically a spring day. You do need to know this, guys. Now, at STP, if we plug in um, one mole of any gas at one atmosphere and 273 Kelvin, um, what happens is when you solve this, you end up getting um, a nice 22.41 or 22.4 um, liters. So what this means is that one mole of any gas is always going to occupy 22.41 liters at STP. So if I tell you STP, you can use this conversion to save yourself a lot of problems <laughs> or a lot of time. Um, if you can't remember what STP is, you can always plug in um, to resolve for it. Now, if you think back to Unit 4, I gave you this mole concept map where I have in here um, for gases, you can use Avogadro's law, or if you're at STP, 22.1 or 22.41 liters is equal to one mole, um, and so that's how we can go between liters and moles for a gas. So at STP, a balloon containing 4.92 moles of a gas has a volume of 15.1 liters. Hmm. This is actually the wrong slide here. Um, we're going to rewrite a problem. And if you are just downloading your PowerPoint today, it's going to be fixed. So there you go. Um, so I'm going to say a balloon at STP occupies 15.7 liters. How many moles is in that balloon? And so because we are at STP, we can go from liters to moles using one mole is always going to occupy 22.41 liters. So we're going to start with that 15.7 liters. And every time we have... 22.41 liters, we get one mole of gas. So we have 15.7 times 
divided by 22.41, and you get something like 7, 0 0.701 moles of that gas. Now, guys, it doesn't matter if this was helium, um, argon, hydrogen, um, CO2, water vapor. It doesn't matter. If it's at STP, it could be any gas. Now, the other way we do this is um, the other type of calculation we do is typically we work with the molar mass of a gas. This is what you're going to do in lab. So we use the ideal gas law we can solve for N, which is our moles. And then if you know the mass, you can solve for your molar mass because you know that molar mass has the units of grams over moles. And so we are going to um, first solve for moles, use the grams from the scale, and then we're just going to divide. So a laboratory group measures an excess of a volatile liquid. They add this to an empty flask with a volume of 257.6 milliliters. They heat the sample to 76.8 degrees Celsius until all of the liquid is vaporized. The pressure in the lab, and therefore the pressure in the flask, is 0 0.924 atmospheres. How many moles of the gas are present? So if we do this, we know that PV is equal to NRT. And to solve for N, we have PV over RT. And just in case you don't remember, R is equal to 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And I will give you that on the test. Now, um, we're going to plug in everything, but first I'm going to make sure we have the right units. P, V, N, R, T. Our P is 0 0.924 atmospheres. Those units are good. Volume is, is 257.6 milliliters. That is actually how you measure it in lab. You're going to use a graduated cylinder and measure in milliliters. We'll have to convert to liters by dividing by 1,000 milliliters every time you have one liter. So your liter is 0 0.257.6. We're solving for our N. R is a given. 6 liter atmospheres per moles Kelvin. And then your T is 76.8 Celsius. We can't do anything with that. Um, we need to add 273 to make sure that we get um, our units in Kelvin. And it's going to give you uh, 349.9 or 350 Kelvin. Now we can plug everything in. So N is equal to PV over RT. So 0 0.924, this is atmospheres, times our 0 0.2576 liters over 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and 350 Kelvin. We plug that in. That was an accident. <laughs> but hopefully, 0 0.924 times 0 0.2576 divided by 0 0.08206 and divided by 350 is going to give us something like 8.29 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, to find the molar mass, we needed the mass that you had. So originally, you're going to have some mass of your flask, and then you're going to measure it again after heating, and you're going to have the mass of the flask plus the volatile liquid minus the flask to get the mass of your volatile liquid. So we're going to take our grams over our moles to get grams per mole. 
So we're going to have 0.142 grams of our liquid over the 0 0.00829. And you get something like 17 grams per mole. And then from a list of unknowns, you can actually take this and try and identify what is present there. OK? That is it for gas stoichiometry. You have a lot more examples in your sample questions.